All right, it's time to get this gear track put on. Uh, what I have is two six-foot pieces and one four-foot piece. Obviously, the smaller pieces for the top of the gantry. Anyways, before I do anything, I'm going to go ahead and prep this stuff just like I did the other steel. I'm just using a stainless steel brush, and I'm going through all these grooves that have been cut in there. The gear track itself, there's some junk inside of there, so I'm just getting it all out of there. As soon as I come back, I'll give it a nice little wipe down and then uh, get this T9 sprayed on there and um, let it dry off and then take it off, help protect it from rust. That's the first step in this process. All right, after I got the gear track clean and the bow shield put on while it was drying, I was working on getting these rack and pinion pieces put on and mocked up just to make sure everything was right. And I actually ran into a problem, three problems. Um, they all dealt with um, me being able to bolt into the linear carriage. What I did when I set this up, since I did it a little bit different, I was doing my own thing, all these bolts go all the way through. And unfortunately, right where this has to screw into, um, I had a bolt going through, so I had to take out the bolt on both sides of the, of the x-axis and to replace it with a shorter bolt, and it allows this to go into. Um, that wasn't too bad. What was bad was this particular bolt up here that goes all the way through, I had to disassemble the entire uh, z-axis. So save yourself some trouble and um, make sure that you're paying attention more than I am. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, this is how it's all going to come together. So I went ahead and started fabbing up these rack and pinion systems and this is covered in an earlier video, it's really no different. The motors still aren't installed, but uh, that's what it looks like with the spring mechanism up top here I've got it sitting up here this one's a little bit different because it rides on a horizontal plane rather than a vertical plane but uh, anyways just to show you you can see the track facing outward and there's where the gearing hits and basically you know there's going to be a belt around this part of it which connects to the motor but this is how the whole system gets driven so you know it, it's going to be a nice setup and uh, it'll make a little bit of noise but um, it's going to be accurate also these are the clamps that hold the gear track in place this is why I cut the groove down in this gantry um, only bought a few of them they were kind of pricey so I you know saved money here I'm gonna go ahead and make some wooden clamping systems that lock down similar to these uh, it doesn't have to be anything fancy it just has to hold the gear track in place and prevent it from flexing so I got a couple things I'm gonna work on right now that being one of them um, in the meantime I'm just leaving this uh, track at its 48 inch length right now seeing as it doesn't stick out any farther in the steel I don't really have a reason to cut this track down uh, the sides I'm definitely going to be cutting maybe I'll cut this one too but right now it doesn't look too bad just being left alone I gotta cut some of this gear track down the size so all I've done here is just set it up on my bench with a series of risers and a clamp to hold it in place while I cut it um, I have room underneath so the blade can go through without cutting into the bench two ways to do this. You can use a regular hacksaw. I'm going to use the uh, reciprocating saw uh, with a nice blade. This one's made by Diablo. Uh, it's called a steel demon blade. They work really good at cutting through this stuff. It leaves a nice clean edge which you can file smooth after it's done. So I've already gone and drawn my line. I'm going to cut it right between the teeth. That way in the future if I ever needed to expand this, if I make something larger, I can add another piece on and I'll have a nice flat edge. All right, I went ahead and uh, cut all those pieces off, so I got two of the, the longer rails uh, cut down, and here's some leftover track, and also just took a little bit off the gantry rail, uh, just so it wouldn't hang out off over the edge. Uh, next up is to create a um, hold down track. This is what holds the gear rack down. This is a commercially available piece, and I'm just going to go ahead and replicate something similar out of wood. You know, it doesn't have to be fancy, it just needs to hold it down, so um, this will easily be done with the table saw. Go ahead and get that done and get this stuff installed. I right, went digging through the scrap bin and I found some hard maple. This is perfect for this application because we've got to have this little lip right here which presses down on the wood. Anyways, this is a little bit thicker than the piece, the commercial piece, but that's perfect because I'm going to just make longer um, pieces that fit down into those dados that I cut anyway. So, I should be able to get quite a few pieces off the top of this and it's going to be a real simple uh, process. I went ahead and joined it and just cleaned it up with the table saw. Um, there's a little bit of chip out because this is some uh, figured maple, although it's not highly figured, but it's really too squirrely to do anything else with, so this will be perfect for this project.
All right, I went ahead and took an oversized blank out of that piece of maple because I knew it was going to be a little bit uh, non-straight as it came out. I knew the wood was going to move a bit. So I never cut it down to size. Anyways, I went ahead and cleaned it up on the joiner and then came back and took it a little bit more uh, just to scrape off of both sides to clean it up more. It's still going to be a little wide, which is perfect because I'm going to go ahead and cut the notch out of the end all the way through first and then we'll clean it up to the exact size at the end. So always leave yourself a way out when you're doing something like this and work with a larger piece of wood until you have to finally cut it to the final size. Now I've gone ahead and drawn some reference lines. I just turned this upside down and then laid it on there and drawn some reference lines. So you see we got a little bit of extra area to work with here. First cut I'm going to make is this notch right here. And I'm not going to make it right on the line. Save your final cuts till the end. So I'm going to rough it out then come back and make a nice clean cut. And then I'm going to take it to the right side of that line. And this line over here is going to be the waist side. So we'll be able to clean this up and get it to fit perfect. And also notice that we have a little bit of height. That's because height difference. That's these little things right here. I'm going to make it longer on the ones I'm doing that fit down into the grooves. So I'm going to go ahead and get this cut out, but uh, you should see basically what I'm about to do here. So here's a finished product. Um, all that I got left to do is probably just use a forcer a bit, drill a recess and a pilot hole for the screw to go through, and then um, cut this down to size as needed. Probably throw some uh, silver spray paint on there as well to blend everything in nice and easy. But uh, all that took was about 15 to 20 minutes to do and saved a little bit of money by doing that. So if you're interested, pretty easy. All right, and just to wrap this segment up, here's what it looks like. I'm gonna get this installed, but uh, can you guess which one is the original? There it is. So six bucks a pop, or you can do it with scrap wood. On this project, I'm gonna be doing 14 of these, so it's a real easy way to save money. My finishing schedule on this was just some sandpaper. I used some cheap primer not even brand name picked that up for like a buck somewhere um, but I did buy some pretty good um, aluminum colored stuff made by Krylon it's called rust tough enamel anyways I put the primer on after I sanded it down and eased the edges let the primer dry sanded it quick again came back shot it with the rust tough let it set up for about a half hour and I'm about to put it on so real quick easy way to save some money on this project if you got the time which if you're building this you do